All right, so in this video, um, I'm going to discuss about the periodic review system. Uh, I'm going to use a vending machine as a prop to explain uh, the key concepts of this periodic review system. So I'm sure we have used a vending machine at least once or many times in our life, and it is quite possible uh, we have seen this person loading the vending machine uh, many times too. The people who load the vending machines, they follow a certain schedule. For instance, they visit the vending machine once a week, twice a week, or whatnot. Well, let me illustrate a situation uh, with a vending machine. So assume this vending machine carries only one type of soda and its capacity is 100 cans. Also assume the person who's attending this vending machine show up only once, once a week uh, on Tuesday. So on the first week, the person sees only uh, 20 cans left in the vending machine, so uh, refills it with 80 cans basically to its maximum capacity. The following week, the demand was low, so 50 cans were left, and the person refills it with 50 cans. And in the third week, there are 40 cans left, person refills it with 60 cans. In the fourth week, 75 cans are left, person refills it with 25 cans. So, what can you say about this situation one? Just based on this four weeks uh, data, uh, one can say the size of vending machine is sufficient to address the demand. So let me show you another situation with the vending machine. So in this case, the size of the vending machine is not sufficient to address the demand because when this person visits the vending machine, for all four weeks, um, there were no cans left. So the demand was too high and the size of the vending machine is not sufficient to address the demand. So assume the time between the visits is fixed. In this case, once in seven days. Question is, what should be the size of the vending machine in order to address a specified customer service level? So the key idea is to design the vending machine's size such a way that it is good enough to address the demand that happens during seven days. So now let us focus on customer service level. So what is this customer service level, right? So this customer service level is usually set exogenously. Since the demand is uncertain, it is up to us, it is up to us to decide on how much of the demand that we are going to address. On one extreme, uh, we can build world's largest vending machine to capture all of the demand, or we can specify something like a customer service level uh, where we can live with a little bit of uh, stock outs. So in this case, 95% is the customer service level. What does this mean? Is that 95% of the time, the vending machine will not run out of sodas. 85% of the time, the 85% is another, you know, viable uh, customer service level. So clearly, in the former case, you can expect the vending machine to be much bigger than the one in the later case. So as you can see, uh, this is the vending machine. Some portion of this vending machine can be used or some portion of its capacity can be used to address the average demand that happens during these seven days. And the rest of its capacity can be used to address the uncertainty in the demand. And this particular capacity is called safety stock. So this safety stock, as the name suggests, it is a safety measure to guard against the uncertainty of the demand. So as a first step, let's see how to calculate the average demand during seven days. Assume uh, we know uh, the demand information for every day in terms of uh, mean and the standard deviation. Since we have seven days, we have seven mean and seven standard deviation. Or we wanted to convert this daily information into a weekly information because, you know, we have to calculate the average demand for the entire week, right? How would you do that? So make another assumption, right? Assume the daily demand information is independent of each other. That is, day one's, let's say day one's demand will not influence the demand of day two and so on. So based on simple prob probability rule, the average demand during seven days is equal to sum of all the averages. So if the demand on the top of it, let's say if the demand during every day follows exactly the same distribution, that is, it has the same mean and variance. If this is the case, the average demand during seven days can be further simplified as the following. This can be even simplified as seven times the average demand per day. Now that we have calculated the average demand during seven days, let's focus on the safety stock. Safety stock depends on two things. First, a customer service level. So this customer service level can be as big as you want, specifically higher the customer service level, higher the safety stock, which in turn increases the size of the vending machine. Second is the variability of the demand during these seven days. So higher the variance, larger uh, the safety stock. So as a result, the vending machine's size will increase. Specifically, safety stock is 
z times standard deviation of the demand. Let's focus on what is z. So based on the customer service level, you can calculate z. So this particular z is a, a statistical figure, also known as standard score. For example, to satisfy a demand with a 95% customer service level, according to statistical analysis, it is necessary to carry extra inventory equal to 1.65 standard deviations of demand variability. This is equivalent to z-score of 1.65. Similarly, a customer service level of 85% corresponds to a z-score of 1.03. Now, you may ask, how do you calculate this z-score? Certainly, you can use Excel function called norm SINV, which is uh, an inverse of standard normal distribution that requires only one argument, which is the probability. In our case, it is simply the customer service level. So for 95%, the z-score is 1.65. For 85%, the z-score is 1.03. So now that we have figured how to calculate z, let us focus on how to calculate the standard deviation of the demand during seven days. Let's go back to this same picture, what we saw before. Let it, now let us start with the variance, right? So variance of the demand during seven days is equal to the sum of all the variances from day one to day seven. So this requires an assumption that the demand, daily demand, is independent of each other. So if on the top of it, uh, all these distributions have the same variance, then this particular equation can be simplified to seven times the variance of the daily demand. And if you take a square root on each side, each side of this equation, then the standard deviation, the left-hand side will become standard deviation of the demand during the seven days. And the right-hand right -hand side is simply square root of seven times sigma, and it is nothing but the standard deviation. So this is the general formula. Standard deviation of the demand during seven days is square root of seven times standard deviation of daily demand. We are almost done with the uh, calculations of uh, calculations for vending machine size. So now I'm going to summarize this idea with this vending machine. So the vending machine size has two components. One is the average demand during seven days. Another one is safety stock. So we are done with this summary. You know, the, this formula for the vending machine size is exactly the same as the, you know, the reorder point calculation in the continuous review system, that is the Q system, where the demand is uh, uncertain, but the lead time is constant. So now let us put some notations into the formulas we have created so far, right? So the time between the visits is called review period. In this example, the review period is seven days. I'm gonna call this seven days as P. So I'm gonna strike this seven, I'm gonna put P in the place of 7. And wherever I see 7, I'm going to put it, put P. So average demand during P days. Average demand during P days is nothing but P times D bar. So this D bar is average demand per day. And the safety stock is standard score Z times sigma P. Sigma P is the standard deviation of demand during P days. And this is again sigma p and sigma d is the standard deviation of demand during a day. Right? So the 7 will go, this is p. So wherever you see 7, you replace it with p. Now another question, what happens to this formulas if there is a lead time of L? So let us look at it. So in the case of vending machine, there is no lead time because you know the person uh, attends the vending machine, reviews uh, the level of sodas and the person would refill the machine right there. So in this case, there is no lead time. Lead time is zero. But in a business environment where a buyer places an order to refill the system to a target level, a supplier may have a lead time. So when there is a lead time, L, you simply replace P with P plus L. That is it. So as simple as that. So uh, one last thing. I did not put this. This vending machine's size, I'm going to notate it as T. So T represents the target level, or in our case, the size of the vending machine. Let's replace P with P plus L. So in this case, you know, the vending machine size should be good enough to address the demand that happens during P plus L days. And the vending machine's size is simply the target level, T. Average demand during P plus L days. And average demand during P plus L days is P plus L times D bar. And uh, the standard D, we have to figure out what is the standard deviation of the demand during P plus L, so on and so on. So just to summarize uh, the periodic review system, so the first step is to select the time between the reviews, whether it is once a week or, you know, once in two weeks or three weeks and whatnot. 
potentially one can use economic ordering quantity and also uh, the annual demand or total demand to determine uh, the number of orders. Taking a reciprocal of this number of orders will give you the, the time between the reviews or time between the order. So once P is calculated, then we can actually move on to set the target level T. Target level T is made of two components, average demand and safety stock. Average demand during P plus L. So this P plus L is also called as protection interval. P plus L is nothing but D bar times P plus L. D bar is the average demand per time period. Time period could be day or week and what. So, and the second is about safety stock. Safety stock is Z times uh, sigma standard deviation of the demand during P plus L, which can be determined by uh, the product of uh, standard deviation per time period times the square root of P plus L. So with this, we are almost there. We are, and uh, before we close this presentation, and I just wanted to show you a numerical example. So in this case, um, almost all the information are given. So uh, there is a demand uh, per week is given, which is 18 units per week and the standard deviation per week is given which is 5 units lead time is given 2 weeks the business operates for 52 weeks economic ordering quantity is 75 units and the customer service level is 90 percent so using this information given information let's look at uh, calculating the time between reviews EOQ is 75 units so total demand can be calculated in this case as 936 units which is the product of demand per week times the 52 weeks will give you the annual demand. Using those two, you can calculate the number of orders, right? Total demand over EOQ. In this case, uh, they place 12.48 uh, times in a given year. So if you take a reciprocal, then for every 0 0.08 year or every 4.2 weeks, they place an order of 75 units. So this is this relates to Q system. But based on the Q system, we were able to figure out what should be the P. So using the P, we can set the target level T. First step is to figure out what is P plus L. So P, we know it's 4.2 weeks. L is given, which is 2 weeks. So P plus L is 6.2 weeks. First step is to calculate the average demand during the 6.2 weeks is the product of 6.2 times 18 units per week which is equal to almost 1112 units and the second step is to figure out what is the Z standard score based on the customer service level of 90% in this case that leads to 1.28 so what is the standard deviation of the demand during 6.2 weeks square root of 6.2 times 5 this 5 is the standard deviation of the demand during a week which is also given for us. So this leads to the standard deviation of 12.45 units for those 6.2 weeks. And using 1.28 and 12.45, you can figure out what is the safety stock. In this case, safety stock is 15.93. And if you sum the safety stock and the average demand, that should give you the target of target level of 127.53 units. So with this, we are done with the periodic review system. Hopefully, uh, you know, you got what you were looking for. And uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it.